G'day folks, welcome back to the channel for episode number 7 of our Cold Spellbreaker playthrough. Uh, where this episode, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, I want to go into the Flooded Passage and get our offhand. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to use it straight away, but I do want to get it so I can talk about it. And then the plan is to also do Pine Barrens and Tyrant's Hold. So, let's get underway. Um, one other thing to mention, I was making a little short video, so you'll know in the timeline where that is made. Um, regarding the, the build, because um, if you remember at the start, I was making a lot of videos saying, you know, it gets better, it gets better, I promise it's good. Um, and I just wanted to show people that actually it does get better. Um, so while I was making that, uh, these gloves dropped, and uh, I will use those at level 30. Don't stress if you don't get something like this, just use whatever you have, it's fine. Um, and I also leveled up to level 29. So, um, the next few levels are going to be spent on Pneumatic Burst and Shadow Dance. Um, this for the heal and speed and all that nice stuff on it and uh, Shadow Dance because the chance to just avoid attacks is really good. And then uh, if we continue putting points in Maven Sphere as well, the ones that get through will be reduced by a fair amount. Um, so once we've got that, I think we will probably um, head back to Arcanist and start heading up the bar. We want to get Star Pact, um, maybe Devastation, um, although we would need some way to convert it to Cold, but we will see. Okay, let's go out to the Flooded Passage and see if we can't kill us a... Is it Rolverathus? I can't remember his name. I always get him and the uh, the Fire Tome guy. No, that's that's Zarthusalan. Yeah, this will be Rolverathus. Now, he is incredibly resistant to cold, so if you don't have, um, for example, the shield to reduce uh, cold resistances around you, you are going to struggle here. You know, it is what it is, so um, just be aware of that. Uh, I don't really need any of this, but we're going to pick it up anyway. And we are going sort of top left of this area. There will be a detonation site. Now, I've only got two dynamite, so I'm hoping this isn't going to cost me three. Of course it is. Okay, we are going to be making a quick detour to Cronley's hideout. And when we get here, we're going to be finding money bags. So money bags can drop up to, I think, up to three dynamite every time you kill him. Uh, generally, you'll see one or two, um, which is fine. Let's get him over here, see if we can't get him to stand in all of the procs. Okay, there he goes. He only dropped one, but you know what? That's fine. Um... That is a lot of elemental damage. Mm. Okay, we'll leave it for now. Let's go get our offhand. Um, depending on the stats, I may swap over. But uh, I think I'm going to leave it for now. But as I said, I do want to talk about it. So let's go ahead and blow this up. Now this little area here is uh, its a little higher level than the area surrounding it. There is also a uh, an exalted chest at the back, I believe. Um, but we more or less just walk through this area. Kill off anything that's here. Yep, there's our exalted stash. And from here... Let's see. None of these guys should be immune to cold. They're just annoyingly resistant. Okay, so exalted stash, guaranteed blue. Uh, we dipped out. Unfortunately, being a poison pants, it may be worth using anyway, just for the armor. Hmm. I think it's probably worth using for the armor alone. Unfortunately, it means we will lose two points of Maven Sphere, but uh, them's the breaks. All right, so here's High Priest Rolderathus. He's got the book we want. Um, hopefully, we can get him to come and play by himself. Usually he has a couple of Frost Revenants. Um, I did see a Priest there, so... Uh, you know what? Let's not wait for him. Let's go say hi. 
Um, of course the entry is on the other side. Okay, so we ran all the way around here for nothing. Lovely. So he's going to be wandering around somewhere. Did he come out? Okay, that's the end of that guy. We do uh, shred a lot of resistances at this point. And also just standing near us, everyone takes a lot of cold damage. So we should be good for killing him. Um, having said that though, I know he has a lot of cold resistance, so I don't know. Bring a searing amber or something. Um, if you don't have all the fun buttons that I do, and it'll be fine. You can see he's doing actually not taking a whole lot of damage, but that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and kill this guy in particular. So the last thing I want is a priest healing him up to full after I've spent all this time working him down. Uh, but as you can see, his health is going down. Stand him in the procs, shred all his resistances, and he did drop the tome, which is good. Um, let's just clear all this rubbish out. Okay, so we should be good to talk about it now. Um, right, Roldorathus' tome, uh, there's a few different levels. This one's level 35, which is unfortunate. However, um, that Death's Chill does give us some bonus cold stuff, including that proc. Uh, that proc is not normally on this. As you can see, the two things we're mainly interested on this item are the Trozen Sky Shard um, effects at the bottom there. The skill recharge is nice, but the main thing is the minus one and a half meter target area. So if I cast this here, this was a pretty good spread, but sometimes you'll see one here and there'll be one here and there'll be one over here. Um, like this one, for example, you can get even more spread out than that sometimes. Um, when you put this book on, it will just take it from a big circle down to a smaller circle. Now it's not going to be pinpoint laser guided accurate, uh, but it will reduce that. Now the downside of course is that shield we have is really, really good. Um, and it's going to hurt to swap that over. So I may not even use this at level 35. I may continue to use this for a lot of normal. We will see. Um, so that was one thing I wanted to talk about. The other thing is, let's go through Deadman's Gulch and get up to Homestead. And then we can look at doing Pine Barrens. I um, already picked up the quest for these guys. I believe that was where I left the end of last episode. So let's continue, shall we? Now coming in here, you're going to be getting a lot, and I mean a lot, of vitality damage. So. You really want um, these soul shards. If you can get two of them, you're probably set. I've only found one, unfortunately, and yes, I did check the bank just to make sure it wasn't me being silly. Um, I have, in fact, only had one of them drop, or at least I've only picked one up. So, whenever I come in here, uh, this is the area I check first. So Ikrix can be here, uh, you can also get, as is the case now, you can get an Ancient Shrine here, and there could also be a Treasure Trove just here as well. So that's something to keep your eye out for. If there is not a Treasure Trove here, there are two, two I think, three other locations. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, blow these guys up. Now, I do want to keep moving to try and minimize the number of things that are actually attacking me. This corrupted guy has a ton of health. Um, and is more or less immune to being slowed down, which is not great. Okay, blueprint for the breastplate. Um, Squalls is a lightning proc. Um, this is probably an upgrade for us. Let me just put that aside. Um, lightning sphere, yes. What else we got? 
Um, Ravages Barb, no. I think the rest of this is probably no good. So that's the totem location. Um, I believe that's the only location for a totem in here. Um, so if you get it, great. If you don't, oh well. Here is another location for the treasure trove. Unfortunately, I don't have enough dynamite, and I'm not going to go and get some. Um, although I will need to before we go into um, into Pine Barrens. I think you need three for that gate, but you definitely need at least one. So then we'll have to go get some. All right, so that's the end of Icrix, and we get another shrine. Now, at this point, I want to work towards, um, uh, what is that called? The Giant's Blood is the proc. Where is it? Let's just not stand in that. Um, just so Giant's Blood is down here. Uh, Behemoth, there we go. So I want to work towards that, which means I need red and blue. So I am going to take Sailor's Guide and Jackal. Um, to my mind, they are the, the best sort of all-around choices here. So Sailor's Guide has some generic um, defensive stuff, and also 10% movement speed, which is very good for the campaign. And then Jackal has total speed, which is very good for everything. Um, yeah, these are two just good all-round devotion um, constellations. If you were more worried about getting to the behemoth as fast as you could, you could look at taking the eel. This is only three points instead of four. Um, and the jackal is probably your best bet for red anyway. Um, the lizard could also be good if you wanted regen. Um, and that will get us to giant's blood. After that, we're going to be working on Rumor, which again needs blue and red. So let's go ahead and get started on the Sailor's Guide. Um, we can probably take that point back, but uh, I'm not going to make a trip just for that. Uh, don't forget to click on the corpse while you're here. This is um, Dahlia Tavern, who had a brother outside who had sent us in to find her. Unfortunately, she's dead, so rip and all that. And we are done in here. So let's head up the side here and get out of here. Alright, and we're out. So from here, we... So normally, if I hadn't just spent dynamite on getting a book I'm not going to use, um, I would generally have the dynamite required to get into Pine Barrens. And so I would come across here, and I would drop a portal next to the Pine Barrens, and then run up to Homestead and use the Rift Gate there to come back. However, there's no point this time, because I don't have the dynamite required to get in. So instead, I'm just going to run up to Homestead, and once I get there, I will reset my session, and we're going to go farm some dynamite. Which is unfortunate. Actually, new plan. Similar to the old plan, we're going to Homestead, as normal, uh, but the blacksmith in Homestead, and specifically only in Homestead, um, actually, that's a lie, you can also use the one in Malmo, um, but specifically Black Legion blacksmiths uh, can craft dynamite from Aether Crystals. So let's just see if we have enough Aether Crystals. We should be able to craft a couple of them at least. Coming up on Homestead, do remember that you have to fight for this Rift Gate. So let's get that done. Nazograd the Fallen apparently doesn't care so much about cold damage. That's fine. So Harath the Slaughterer is down. Okay, Arcane Barriers could be good. And we're in. So, welcome to Homestead, the uh, second most messed up town on the map. Uh, let's have a look. What do we got? Root of Fortitude. Um, I think we'll keep the current chess piece there. Doom Bolt is nice, but... Nah, wrong damage types. I think most of this can just be sold, except for those shoulders. 
Um, yeah, those shoulders, I think, are better. Though we would lose some Chaos Resist, which is not ideal. Especially considering the right side of um, Homestead is full of Chaos stuff. Okay, so a few little things to do before we uh, continue on here. Pick up the Law Notes. And we have a couple of quests to turn in down here. So, Josephine and Isaiah Redden is a merchant. Um, we unlocked him because we... Uh, I wouldn't say we saved him, but we didn't kill him in Act 2. Uh, which is very nice. So, let's go ahead and sell this. And I'll show you why you want to help him. And you want to be nice to him. This is why these potions here. If you extort him, they will not be here. If you kill him, his shop in general will not be here. So you want to make sure you um, you don't do any of that. We want to be nice to him. We want to get his shop here. And uh, he will sell us these potions. Now, I typically will check this shop whenever I remember when I'm in town. It's always worth buying those potions. There will come a time where you need them, so uh, just go ahead and get them. Uh, right, so level 30, I think we put one more point here. Four points will get us 10% chance to avoid attacks um, and some defensive ability. I think four points in Pneumatic Burst is, yeah, 20% health restored. I think we're done here. Um, Knight's Chill is definitely worth getting more in. What do we got in Arcanist to pump? We definitely want more in the bar. Um, more in Maven Sphere would be okay. And we want to put more points in Frozen Core for sure. I think we finish Knight's Chill, and then we uh, pretend that Nightblade doesn't exist anymore, and we go from there. So, let's go ahead and talk to him. I will grab the quest from him to clear out the infestation, and then we are going to craft some dynamite. Now, crafting dynamite does require Aether Shards, which can be crafted from Aether Crystals. Um, so we don't have any Shards, but if we go here, we can turn th three Aether Crystals into one Shard. So I'm going to do that twice. I'm going to make six dynamite. So we are pretty much set for dynamite for a while. Um, and the other thing was I was swapping those shoulders in. Let's go ahead and get my silk swatch back. Okay. Keep the add-on. Uh, we do have a component in every slot, which is nice, except for this ring, which I am holding out for... Um, another soul shard. I am going to swap in the Harud's Frigid Grip, just because it's cold focused. Um, we will lose a little bit of Aether and Vitality resistance, but I don't think I care. Um, those gloves are very nice, and the Ice Spike itself is also quite good. Um, we will be triggering that a lot, and I think we have to use these pants, don't we? You know what? No, we don't. Um, that armor increase is nice, but literally everything else on there except for the vitality resistance is garbage. So I'm going to sell those. Come see what's left of my wares. Um, one thing I do like to do is just press, uh, press, type, type is the word, type in rare here, and uh, just check out the rare rings. Now this particular ring, I am buying that ring. Look at all those resistances, that is nuts. Um, the health on it as well as, I mean, cold resist you can ignore, but poison and acid, chaos, elemental, that is really, really good. Um, about a third of our iron bits just went into that, and uh, it's worth it, definitely worth it. Alright, the rest of that is kind of crappy. Okay, let's get on with this. So... Back to Deadman's Gulch to talk to Olgrim. Here we go. 
Good work. And we send them to Homestead. Now, normally I talk to, I think his name's Travis there, um, because, and I'll show you why, because if you talk to him here, then you don't have to go and hunt him down in Homestead, you can just go straight to Orgrim. You can see he's not exactly hard to find. Colin Tavern, okay. So, you can skip having to come here and talk to him. Not a big deal either way, but just something I do. Okay, Olgrim. What do we do now? We talk to Captain Soma, who is here. And she will send us to track down an abomination. But we are not going to do her abomination just yet. We are actually going to head back out here into the withering fields. And we're going to follow the road south. And we are heading to Pine Barrens. There we go. Now, if you don't have the required crystals, uh, being level 30, you will still have access to the crystals outside the Warden's lab. It's probably easier to farm crystals than it is to farm dynamite. Um, you could also just go for a quick run and get a bunch of dynamite. If you wanted to do dynamite, if you go to Old Arcovia, I'm not actually going to do this, I'm just going to show you where it is, and then you head into the Hanafi mine here, there is a guaranteed dynamite um, at the back section of that mine. It's always there. There's also another guaranteed dynamite in Cronley's Lair, and money bags will drop between... I want to say he always drops one, but let's say he has a chance to not drop one. So let's say he's from zero to three dynamites. Um, also, all of the... Um, all of the scrap piles in Cronley's Lair have a chance to drop them as well. So Cronley's Lair is a good place for dynamite. Right, we are into Pine Barrens. Now, Pine Barrens is a quick sort of 15-20 minute area. There's a couple things to note in here. There are, I want to say, four quests, um, which all basically require you to go find a big thing and kill it, which we are going to do. There is also the Arcanist Necklace, or Amulet, sorry, which has plus one to all Arcanist skills. Um, if you want to use Devastation, you can't use that amulet, but since we don't have that yet anyway, it's not a big deal. So if it drops, it's, I'm going to use it. If it doesn't drop, I'm going to reset and kill it again. Once we are finished with, um, with Pine Barrens in general. So you can go and talk to these guys, pick up all their quests. It doesn't actually matter if you have the quest or not. If you just go do the quest, if you know what they are, then uh, you can turn them in at the end. All in one go. So, first stop is going to be Mogara, who we are going to kill. Um, she is fairly high damage, um, and she has a lot of friends. You are also going to want to kill any. Are they called Deathstalkers? The Manticores here. Manticore, the yellow named ones, is the ones you want. Waste Stalker. These guys will drop, uh, occasionally will drop. Um, what is it, Manticore Venom, or something like that, Venom Sack. Um, you want one of those. So one of those for turn in, kill Megara. Then you have, um, quest to kill, um, the spider, who we are going to kill. These things drop like candy. You can rift back to town, put it in your bank, come back, get another one, and then not have to worry about it in the Elite and Ultimate, but... I mean, realistically, who cares? You're going to get them just on your way to Megara, who you will have to kill in Elite and Ultimate anyway. So just pick one up and then ignore them. Okay, here we go. Okay, we will have to kite her for a little bit. Okay, all of our friends are dead. I think we can just stand in front of her now. Use a potion. Use pneumatic burst, and it'll be fine. 
Magara's Fangs here. This is the uh, plus one to all skills in Soldier Amulet. Um, no downside at all to that. If you're playing a soldier, get that. It's good. So Magara is dead, and we have a poison gland here ready to go. So we're done here. This whole left side of Pine Barrens is now finished. You can run around, you can uh, kill more grobles and manticores. There's maybe an ancient beast shrine over there, or a, an ancient savage shrine. Uh, you can go do that if you want. Uh, I'm not fussed about it. Next step, walk underneath this bridge. This is the separator from for the, uh, the two different sides of Pine Barrens. Right here is potentially one of the caves we're looking for, or one location for the cave we're looking for. There's only one cave. Um, it can potentially be here. If you don't find it there, you see this L shape. Uh, there could potentially be another one at the bottom of this L shape. Uh, I believe it's here, but uh, it's not here. So if you continue heading south from there, it could be here as well. It's not. And from here I get a bit fuzzy, because it almost always shows up in one of those locations. Um, there are two caves in this area. You can see this one here. This one shows up on the map, so this is not the one you want. Here we go. This is the one you want. See how it's not marked on the map? That's what we want. So we go in here. There's a whole bunch of these Briarthorns. They are indeed what we are here for. Um, specifically the big one at the end. So, I think it's all Briar Brud, uh, all Briar... something, all Briar... Oh, all Blood Briar, there we go. Names in this game are hard. you think I would have learned this by now. Um, you may also have noticed that I am horrible at names. So, there is that. Okay, he's dead. That's another quest done. Now you can come and open all these bodies and chests and such here if you're interested. Um, I'm not going to go chasing after every tiny every little rock. One thing I did just notice, however, is a soul shard. So, I'm going to chuck that on my last ring. And we are good there. Let's continue down here. So in this cave, there are a couple of things of note. One is the spider that drops the plus one arcanist amulet, who we will be killing because obviously. Um, the other thing to note is right behind her is a devotion shrine, which obviously again, we will be getting. So when you get here and you see a cow, when you see the cow, the spider is here. She's hanging from the roof, and unfortunately you can't look up, so here we go. There we go, so she's dead, all of her friends are dead, and she dropped us a blue item. Blue item is probably garbage. Um, it's actually not bad. I'm not going to use it because our MI is better, but... Um, the proc on that is not bad. The lightning stuff is okay. I say that this is a cult build, but when you're starting off at low level, if you're doing any kind of elemental build, you're really an elemental build. So there is another shrine for us, uh, which I believe we are going to put into yep, the start of the Sailor's Guide. There'll be one more shrine pretty close behind this, which we're going to continue Sailor's Guide for. Um, there is an exit just up here. You can go that way if you wish, however, I am going to go out the other side, uh, because of reasons. I'll be honest, I don't actually know what the reason is. Should look where that other exit comes out, actually. It's probably closer to where I need to go. Um, regardless. We keep killing things on our way. The general strategy for traveling with this build is you find a big pack, you freeze it, and you just keep running. We do have an ancient savage totem here, and we are trying to get into the right side of Pine Barrens, which is kind of separated by this little barrier here, and there's a bunch of ways through. Um, 
you can't see it on the map here, but there is a rock here and a rock here, so we have to go all the way up this time. So we go up and around, we come back down here, and this is Tyrant's Hold. So this little corner here, you follow along and you can duck in here for another shrine. Let's just everybody stop. Treasure troves are almost always worth opening, unless you need the dynamite for something else pretty much immediately. There's our next shrine, next point into Sailor's Guide, and we continue on. Um, I am looking for new boots though, so that could be good. 11% move speed, some offensive ability, that's probably worth using. I do have a Mark of the Traveler, so why not? I uh, don't think the uh, the spider dropped her necklace either. Went to all that trouble to talk it up before I killed her and then walked away like I'd forgotten it existed. So I will at some point go back and kill her again. Um, realistically though, plus one to Arcanist is nice, but not, not the end of the world to not have it. So if you don't get one either, feel free to skip it. We'll get one later. Um, I am going to go back and get it though, so take that for what it's worth. Alright, so now we head into the actual fort. We are basically just here for the guy at the end. Um, everything else in here is done. There's no more devotion shrines. We just need to kill the guy at the end of here. And whatever is in between us and him, uh, you can skip or kill as you wish. Obviously, XP is always good. Being an inside area is not great for Trozen Sky Shard because it will hit these things. Right. There is a dynamite in here, which, if you're heading that way, is always going to be there. Uh, you can choose to go get it or not, up to you. It's usually a little bit out of the way. Alright, there's a lot of stuff here, including this guy who I want to kill. Alright, so as you can see, the dynamite is typically blocked off with doors from every direction. You can come this way though and pick it up. It's almost always accessible from the north. Um, these doors around it do show that it can be accessible from other locations. I've just found it's almost always from the north. Okay, Gribble Sky Effigy of Death's Chill. These ones are not bad. They are lightning based, um, but they're lightning and cold, I guess. And the Death's Chill is the uh, the frigid Nova there, which we did pick up on Rolderathus Tome as well. Um, as with that Tome, though, it's just straight up not as good as the shield we're using, so no uh, blue item to sell. Why not? All right, and level 32. So that is, I think Night's Chill may be maxed now. But uh, minus 27% cold resistance just for standing next to us is pretty good. Definitely can't complain about that. Uh, one thing to note about this area, this is the boss room. Uh, he is sort of up that way. Um, I want to kill all of the shaman that are in here these guys, because, oh sorry, the witch doctors, uh, because they will heal him. So you want to make sure to take them out. Here he comes now. Uh, let's go ahead and dispel him. I don't think it'll do anything, but why not? And then I want to stand closer to him, if possible. I want to hold his hand, so we get all of the, the damage from our auras. Okay, there we go. He dropped his MI. It's uh, rubbish for this build. 
So heroic chest, this is another one-shot chest, so we'll get another blue item. Uh, again, not very good for us, and a guaranteed dynamite again. So this place has two guaranteed dynamites. Um, probably not worth coming all this way just for two dynamites, honestly. Right, uh, that was the wrong rift. I want Pine Barrens. So at this point, you come here, you talk to this guy, what about the Black Legion, what are you doing, do you need any help? And now you can just not do what I did, just spam the bottom option. Um, looking to do my part, spam the bottom option, there we go. It's basically a level for turning all that in. Uh, they will also give you, where is it? This, the Manticore Venom, and there was a sword as well, um, Manticore Longsword. These are not really any good for our build, but um, they do give it to you as a quest reward. Right, let's head back to Homestead and empty our bags. Um, actually, I'm going to end the episode here, and I'll do all this selling off-screen. I'm also going to go and farm the... Uh, the amulet to replace this maven's lens. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye for now.